All right, boys and girls, today we're going to be installing this 105 amp single wire alternator onto our Mare Cruiser 7.4 MPI to replace the factory alternator, which is a 65 amp Mare Cruiser unit. And uh, this one also came with a test sheet to show what amps it's uh, outputting at different RPMs. Looks like at 1600 RPMs we're getting about 59 amps, which is just about what the factory amp is providing at full speed. Um, 2400 RPM we're getting 83 amps, 3000 RPM, 105 amps, 6000 RPM, which we're not really going to hit on this boat, uh, 107 amps. So even at, at cruising speeds, 3500 RPM or so, we're still getting close to 100 amps. That's just amazing output where we're probably getting less than half of that at uh, any given RPM on the factory alternator. Um, so this one is a marine alternator. If you ever are replacing your alternator on a boat, make sure it is a marine specific alternator with the spark arrestor and everything built in so that you're not gonna cause any sort of fire. Um, we're replacing a three wire alternator which has uh, three wires. This is a single wire alternator which just has the power going here and if you want hooking up the ground um, to, to one of the terminals here. And that's it. It's a very simple unit uh, internally regulated at 14.7 volts and hopefully we'll be able to uh, have more power generated for our three, three battery uh, setup. We have three Group 31 Duracell AGM marine batteries. One here for the starting battery, and we've got two on this side uh, for the house batteries, and they're all hooked up to a couple of Perco switches, which uh, help identify and charge which battery set we want working at any given time. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is pull the uh, factory alternator off, and then go from there. All right. First thing we're going to do is pull our belt off. And before you do pull your belt off, make sure you take a picture or a video of it so that you know the routing of the belt. That's very important. I see it all the time where people pull the belt off and they can't remember how it goes back on. This one's a serpentine belt, not a V-belt, a little bit different. So make sure that you are checking the um, direction it feeds through all the pulleys. And then also while you're at it, check the condition of your belt. Make sure it's not cracked or needing replacing or anything like that. This one's in good shape, so we're going to leave it. But if it does need replacing, now is a good time to go ahead and do that. Next thing you want to do is undo the tensioner. Um, this motor is right here. And uh, all we're going to do is loosen up this bolt, which I already have. And if you can see the back, it's got a little gear that holds it in place from top to bottom. So when you're putting it back, all you want to do is set the tension and then tighten the bolt up. So right now we've got the belt loose should be able to pull it right off. We'll pull that off and then work on the alternator. So this alternator has a few little connectors. I'm going to try to point them out for you here. Oh, and make sure you have your battery off. I've already turned mine off. This has a ground connector right here, the power connector up here, and then there's two wires coming out. You can see them down there that are connected with some little butt connectors. Those just pull off. Make sure you don't uh, pull the wire out of the terminal, um, out of the crimp. Be careful when you do those. And then uh, the ground and the power, um, there, there's a nut that holds each one of those in place. So we're going to pull those off. And then afterwards, the alternator itself is held on by two bolts. One up here at the top, and then one down below right there. All right, the alternator is out. It's pretty simple and straightforward. This one looks like it's got a good bit of corrosion on the positive terminal that outputs the power. This may have been part of our problem, may have not been. It looked like it was seated pretty well, but at the same time, there, there was some corrosion on there. So, as you can tell, there are slight differences between the two. Um, not anything too major. And uh, the main difference that we do have to take care of, you see, even if we line them up here, so the main difference is the pulleys. Uh, ours is set up for a serpentine pulley, the new one's set up for a V-belt. 
uh, pulley, so we are going to attempt to swap the pulley from one to the other and then work on installing the new alternator. So in order to get the uh, pulley off, you got to remove the nut, obviously. Um, the easiest way to generally to do that, put on a good glove. You want to grab the pulley by the neck and then use an impact with the right size socket and get the nut off. The nut is a standard right, her right turn tight, so in order to loosen it, you have to turn it left counterclockwise. And uh, we're going to do that right now get the nut off and uh, and then swap pulleys with the new alternator all right we've got the fan and the pulley and all the collars from bottom to middle to top switched over to the new alternator and it spins freely make sure it doesn't uh, snag on anything or touch anything and now we're ready to put it in all right we've got the new alternator in, fit the old bracket, took a little bit of finagling to get it all lined up but it fits just fine. New pulley, or the old pulley and the old fan are on here. And if we circle around the back, it's kind of hard to see. So we've got the power wire here and the ground wire connected to this terminal here. And in this case our dipstick was uh, sitting a little too far that way because the old housing on the old alternator was smaller, it was a smaller alternator. Um, so all we have to do is just, uh, it's just a thin tube, you can see the dipstick, it's very easy to bend. So all we have to do is just bend a little bit this way and towards the front and it still has room to wiggle around in there. It's not squished or pinched or anything. Our dipstick still comes out just as easily, and our new alternator is on. And we're going to put the belt on, and then set the tensioner, and then give it a test. Um, and then one other thing, um, we've got the two wires that aren't used, since the old one was a three-wire alternator. You've got the purple and the red. And uh, these shouldn't be necessary, but we're going to go ahead and test everything, make sure it all works, make sure we're getting signals where we need all the uh, dash, tachometer, everything else functions, and we're getting a good charge. And then after that, we'll cap these off and tape them up so that they don't uh, touch anything or short out or anything like that. And we'll tie them up off to the side.